بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lessons because we'll be taking the conversation and also the pronunciation. If you remember we said that we'll be learning about the intonations, the rising and the falling intonations. So we'll be learning about them today. But before we do that, let's revise what we previously took in our previous lesson, the uh, lesson and discuss. We learned about the slouch detector, if you remember, the uh, gadget that helps you, your posture, the way you sit, that's connected to your, uh, that uh, observes your spinal and neck uh, position, and it buzzes when you're sitting incorrectly. And also we learned about uh, super foods, that food, the foods that are rich with vitamins and so on. Also, we learned about the evidence that led scientists to suggest early humans cooked their first meals more than 1.9 million years ago. So we answered, when did uh, cooking uh, start? Also here, the hagfish, according to fossil records, have existed for over uh, 300 million years ago. So we learned that there are some uh, species that are older than the dinosaurs. Also, we answered the question, do animals laugh according to scientists? Yes, they uh, laugh. And we learned some of the uh, words here, the posture, it means the position of one's body when they are sitting or uh, standing, combat, to fight, uh, deficiency, shortage of substance, crucial, it means very important, or it means uh, essential, redundant, it means that it's not necessary, gill, in the fish, the, uh, the part of their body that, uh, obtaining, it's, that it's for obtaining oxygen from uh, water. And also the word specimen here, something such as an animal or plant, or plant collected as an example of particular uh, category. So let's jump to today's lesson. We'll be learning about how to express enthusiasm and uh, how to express regret and learn about the uh, intonations. So open your books page four, open your books, page four, look at the photos and say, what do you think the conversation is about? So open page four and look at the pictures. Try to guess the conversation, uh, the topic of the conversation, what is it about? For example, in this picture here, what do you see here? Yes, you see uh, the desert and uh, uh, camels and their uh, shepherd who is leading them through the uh, uh, desert. The uh, picture here you see, you see what the, a falcon, that's correct, a falcon. So you can guess, I think you can, you can guess here the topic of the uh, conversation. So maybe it's about the desert, camels and falcons and so on. So we will be, we'll know the answer to this question now when we hear the, uh, conversation between the presenter and Mr. Ali. So let's listen to it. Presenter, we're at the edge of the desert, waiting for the falcon hunters to arrive. And here they come. I thought their car was white. This must be them. They must have been on the road longer than expected. Welcome back. It's great to see you again, Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali, thank you. Good to see you too. I wasn't sure you'd be here. Presenter, of course I'm here. I can't wait to hear about your exploits. Have you had a successful hunt? Mr. Ali, have we? Indeed, we have been more fortunate than we could have ever expected. This has been the best trip ever. I wish we could have gone on for another two weeks. Presenter, but you must be exhausted, and you must have been in the sun a lot. Mr. Ali, you can tell, can't you? Oh, well, we must be looking the part. What can you expect after weeks of camping in the desert? But that's the way we like it. Presenter, and now, what's next? Mr. Ali, now we are going to see our clients. My falcons are spoken for, so I won't have to look around for buyers. This is also important in our business, having good clients and keeping them happy. And of course, we're going to have our truck cleaned and serviced before we do anything else. Mr. Ali, no, not really. I only think of the hunt. You can't catch falcons if all you think about is how you are going to sell them. Falcons deserve respect and admiration. I often feel we have the best of both worlds. Making a decent living while doing something we genuinely enjoy. There can't be too many people who can claim that. Presenter. 
You're quite right. I wish you continuing success in your endeavor and hope to catch up with you next year. Mr. Ali, you're very welcome. It's really good to have the opportunity to talk about our trade and know that more people will hear about it. So now that we have listened to the conversation between the presenter and Mr. Al Ali, we know that Mr. Ali really loves uh, Falcons and he respects and he respect them. He says here, Falcons deserve respect and admiration. I often feel we have the best of both worlds, making a decent living while doing something we generally we genuinely enjoy. So if you enjoy something and you make a decent living, uh, from it, it means that you are uh, very lucky. As he said, there can't be too many people who can claim that. So that's correct. So now that we have listened to the conversation, we now know the story behind the uh, uh, pictures. So let's answer some questions here. Where does the conversation take place? Has the trip been successful? What is important in the falconing business? Why does Mr. Al Ali thinks or think he has the best of both worlds. So where does the conversation take place? Has the trip been successful? What is important in the falconing business? Why does Mr. Ali think he has the best of both uh, worlds? So we'll be answering this question. The first question here, the first question at the edge of the desert. As at the beginning of the interview the uh, the interviewer said we are at the edge of the desert so this is the location of the interview where does the conversation take place at the edge of the desert has the trip been successful so has the trip been successful or not so let's see the correct answer here has the trip been successful according to mr ali it was the best trip the hunters had ever had. So again, according to Mr. Ali, yes, it was successful. What is important in the falconing business? So the falconing business, according to Mr. Ali, of course. What is important in the falconing business? So look up the conversation and try to come up with the answer. Let's see the correct answer here to have good clients and to keep them happy. And you can say, add more, one more question. To have, a good, uh, to have good clients and to keep them happy. Why does Mr. Ali think he has the best of both worlds? I think we discussed this earlier. Why does Mr. Ali think he has the best, he gets the best of both worlds? Of course, we discussed this. So the answer here, he really likes what he does and he also makes a good living out of it. When you like what you do and you make a good or decent living out of it, so you, you got the best in both worlds. So the, the question here, you look at the chart here, we have the functions and the expressions. Make deduc the deductions, actions that are done for one, report thought, express enthusiasm, express regret or wishes, strong agreement, focus on action, not doer, focus on the action itself, not the doer, the person who did this action. So these are the functions here, we'll be uh, numbering them with these expressions here. Number one, I thought their truck was white, I wasn't sure you'd be here. Number two, and of course we're going to have our truck cleaned and serviced before we do anything else. Number three, which is already answered, to make deductions. Number three, this must be them. They must have been on the road longer than expected, but you must be exhausted and you must have been in the sun a lot. Oh, well, we must be, uh, we must be looking uh, the part. So this is making deductions. Try to guess what happened. Number four, have we indeed, we have been more fortunate than we could have over expected. This has been the best trip ever. Number five, I wish we could have gone on uh, for another two weeks. Number six, my falcons are spoken for. So I won't have to look around for uh, buyers. Number seven, you're quite right. So these are the expressions said or uttered by uh, people. And these are the functions. And we have to put the number in the correct 
uh, function. So let's listen to the conversation again and try to deduct and answer this question correctly. Let's listen again. Presenter, we're at the edge of the desert, waiting for the falcon hunters to arrive. And here they come. I thought their car was white. This must be them. They must have been on the road longer than expected. Welcome back. It's great to see you again, Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali, thank you. Good to see you too. I wasn't sure you'd be here. Presenter, of course I'm here. I can't wait to hear about your exploits. Have you had a successful hunt? Mr. Ali, have we? Indeed, we have been more fortunate than we could have ever expected. This has been the best trip ever. I wish we could have gone on for another two weeks. Presenter, but you must be exhausted, and you must have been in the sun a lot. Mr. Ali, you can tell, can't you? Oh, well, we must be looking the part. What can you expect after weeks of camping in the desert? But that's the way we like it. Presenter, and now, what's next? Mr. Ali, now, we are going to see our clients. My Mr. Ali, now, we are going to see our clients. My falcons are spoken for. So I won't have to look around for buyers. This is also important in our business, having good clients and keeping them happy. And of course, we're going to have our truck cleaned and serviced before we do anything else. Mr. Ali, no, not really. I only think of the hunt. You can't catch falcons if all you think about is how you are going to sell them. Falcons deserve respect and admiration. I often feel we have the best of both worlds. Making a decent living while doing something we genuinely enjoy. There can't be too many people who can claim that. Presenter, you're quite right. I wish you continuing success in your endeavor and hope to catch up with you next year. Mr. Ali, you're very welcome. It's really good to have the opportunity to talk about our trade and know that more people will hear about it. So before we answer the uh, questions, let's uh, look up some words here. Do you think of the financial gain? What does it mean, the financial gain, while you're hunting? The financial gain, what does it mean? While you're hunting, the, uh, the presenter asked, do you think of the financial gain? So financial, something related to what? Yes, that's correct, something related to money. So do you think of the money while you're hunting? Of course, he said, no, not really. I only think of the hunt. So he says, um, I don't think about money. I only think about the hunt. You can't catch falcons if you all, uh, if you all you think about is how you're going to sell them. So here is another word related to money. Falcons deserve respect and admiration. So he said, when you're hunting falcons, don't think about money uh, because falcons deserve respect and also admiration. So let's continue with our lesson here. Let's connect the words with the correct, the functions with their correct expressions. Make deductions is already uh, number three here. This must be them. This is making a deduction. This must be them. So actions that are done for one. Actions that are done for one, the second one, which is the correct expression here. So the second one takes number what? So let's see the correct answer here. It's number two. Actions that are done for one. And of course, we're going to have our truck cleaned and serviced before we do anything. So we're going to have our truck, our truck cleaned. So someone is going to clean our truck. This is the meaning actions that are done for someone. Someone will do the action for you because they're not themselves cleaning the truck. Will, they'll be bringing some people to clean it. Report thought. So to report thought, to express a thought. So which number is that? Let's see the correct answer here. It's number one. In the beginning, you can see it here. I thought the truck was white. I wasn't sure you'd be here. So this is to deliver or to express your thought. You can say, I thought their truck was white. To express enthusiasm, that you are excited about something. To express enthusiasm, ex uh, express your excitement. So which one is it? Let's see the correct answer here. It's number four. Have we indeed, you can see the exclamation mark here, it's for enthusiasm. Have we indeed, 
We have been more fortunate than we could ever expect it. This has been the best trip ever. So you can notice here that Mr. Ali is extremely excited. Because this is expressing enthusiasm. What about expressing regret or wishes to express your regret or wishes? So it's number, let's see the correct answer here. It's number five. From the beginning, you can see, I wish, I wish we could have gone on for another two weeks. So here he wishes something and he regrets something. He regrets coming back. He wishes to, that they could have been there, they uh, stayed there for another two weeks. Again, I wish we could have gone on for another two weeks. So, so he wishes for something and he also regrets coming back. Strong agreement. An expression here that gives strong agreement. Which one is it? So let's see the correct answer here. It's number seven. You're quite right. When you say to someone, you're quite right, it means that you uh, strongly agree with him. You're quite right. Last one here, focus on the action, not the doer. Focus on the action itself the action itself, not the person who did the action, or it says here the doer. So which number is it? Of course, there's only one remaining. It's number six. Focus on the action. My falcons are spoken for, so I won't have to look around for buyers. So we are focusing on the action, not on the doer of the action. I won't have to look around for buyers. So your turn here, role play with a partner, choose a celebrity to welcome at the airport. So imagine that you are a, an interviewer and the, your friend is a celebrity coming from the airport and role play as an interview, just like the reporter and Mr. Ali. So role play with a partner, choose a celebrity to welcome at the airport. And of course, when you're finished, change the positions, maybe you'll uh, your friend will be the reporter and you will be the uh, celebrity. Jumping on to the pronunciation part, listen and find examples for rising and falling intonation. In the conversation, identify attitude or feeling if irrelevant as an enthusiasm, regret, question, etc. So we have listened to the article uh, twice. I think you can, you noticed some rising intonations and falling intonations. For example, here, can you tell me where is a, a, a rising intonation? A rising intonation that expresses maybe enthusiasm when you are excited, of course, you'll raise your voice. This, the rising in, uh, in intuition here. So for example, this is the best trip ever. So the intonation here, his sound will be raised, rising up. For example, have we indeed, this is another example, we have been more fortunate than we could ever expect it. This has been the best trip ever. Or for example here, you can tell, can't you? So when you say, can't you? The tag question here, this is also a rising intonation. What about a falling intonation here? Give me an example of a falling intonation here. So, for example, in the last part, and now what's next? When you say what's next, the WH questions, they have a falling intonation. What's next? Do you have a falling intonation? So now you can uh, guess that the rising intonations and the falling intonations, they express something, enthusiasm or regret. Of course, when you regret something, you say it with the falling intonation that you, that you are, of course, uh, regretting doing it. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next, le next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.